Hello y'all on YouTube, this is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a very special review impressions of a knife that was given to us, um, to Benjamin, to, uh, gave it to one of the people in our Apex group, and he was able to share it along. So thank you to Benchmade for allowing me to check this knife out. I do appreciate it. Uh, Benchmade was my first love in getting into higher end knives. It was the Mini Barrage, was my first one. I bought at Cabela's, and I spent a whole hundred dollars on that, and I thought I'd never spend that much. So things have changed, but this is the full size. Um, and we'll talk about this is the full size uh, Claymore. And you can see this. This is black class, real quick. The 9071BK-1. So this is an automatic. And, and you can see that with this red light. Red light means it's hot. Black means it's locked. You can't open it. When you do that, release it. It does open. Now this is the Tonto version. Nice Tonto blade. It is a flat grind, so there's no hollow grind on this. But it's cool. It's a dual grind. You see the not compound grind. They're both the same grind, but it is flat grind on both sides. It's got a nice pointy tip there. Nice, very pokey tip there. So if you're trying to get into dog food, cat food, mulch, fertilizer, or you know cases of water, this is definitely going to be a good blade for that. Now the automatic works pretty well. This is way more powerful than the mini Claymore. I will tell you that I'm very impressed with that and I do know when you release it here it does go back even here so it does have a bit of a spring and it's not pretty it's not weak deep pocket carry clip as I've already noted before so that's really great t6 is all the way around that's a little disappointing especially with a larger knife like this you'd think you'd maybe consider t8 that's a t8 pivot there that's okay um, the centering is pretty dead on centering now this is frn plastic injected molding so you know you're, you're you're not getting g10 you're not getting carbon fiber and this is a, a, a frn you know plastic molded uh, in backspacer as well that works well with this uh, it does have a lock red means it's it's unlocked and black means it's locked and so you can also lock it when it's in open position so it doesn't close so if you wanted to leave it open that's really cool too now i have medium to medium large hands my hands are large width wise they're short finger wise so they're medium and i have plenty of room so extra large double extra large hands would absolutely fit really well you could sort of choke up here i wouldn't recommend it there's not a whole lot of jimping you could easily slide onto that sharpening choil and that would be uncomfortable so you definitely slice your finger has a pretty thick robust blade does come to a tip it's got a nice swedge on top for navigated cuts so that's cool that tip is really going to be a pokey pokey for as far as opening and closing boxes i like that so if we unlock this we'll be able to depress the button lock and uh, the plunge lock right here will release it excuse me it'll come down open it up and then you can lock it up again make sure you have a good grip this one's pretty powerful much more powerful than uh, I would say the other, the mini Claiborne. So this one could pop out of your hand. Make sure you know what you're doing. You got a good handle grip on there. It does lock in place, so you won't accidentally discharge it if you keep it locked. So that's nice. Um, we'll say it has a little bit more weight, and we'll get into that here in a second. There is jimping all the way around. It's rounded, but this is sharp all the way here, the material. So FRN, I'm not a big fan of it because of things like that. You get like weird textures, weird things. Uh, doesn't do corners really well, so that's always disappointing in one of these knives. Well, let's go ahead and get right into the weights and measurements. Okay, so we're in grams. We need to get over to ounces. All right, so this one is 4.98 ounces, just under four ounces. So just under four ounces as far as the overall um, the overall weight of the knife. So let's go ahead and measure the length here. All right, so we're looking at, I wanna say eight and five eighths, eight and five eighths, kind of a knife total wise. The grip area, you definitely have about four and a quarter to four, I'm gonna say four and three, eight, three fifths four and three fifths as a grip handle. So that's nice if you take this cut off part and, and you're allowed for a finger to rest over there, it would definitely work in such a manner, that's for sure, right? Let's look at the overall from the tip of the blade to the handle. So we're probably gonna be right at, I wanna say three and five eighths. So three and five eighths for the overall length from the tip to the top of the handles. If we want to talk about the overall cutting length, we are looking at about three and a half inches. Three and a half inches of cutting length from here to here. So that is you know, not a short knife, but it's not a gargantuan knife, so that's cool. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness as well. All right, so let's see what we're talking about here. So we're at 0.117 or, or 118 thousands of an inch, so 
eight inches. So definitely over one tenth of an inch, but certainly well, well under two tenths of an inch. So it's pretty thin, but again, this is CPM D2. So it's not the ingot steel, it is the powder steel, much, much better steel than the ingot D2. Definitely have better, better structures in the steel, especially when it goes through the annealing and heat treat and, and stuff and cooling process. This makes it a much, much better steel. So that's nice, but it is coated, which you would expect with a D2 steel. D2 steel is not stainless steel, so you have to deal with that. And so it's nice they coated that. That's very cool. All right, deep pocket carry clip. It is the uh, steel one. This is a longer clip than the mini barrage. I might switch it out with the mini barrage because I would like a shorter clip. I don't like huge clips like this. Plenty of room to clear under here. You got a lot of room. I wish the, the screws were recessed. It is 2023. Come on, Benchmade. Let's recess some of these screws. You can do that. I know you can. May, I don't know if it costs a whole lot more, but I would certainly consider that. I think it's a nice aesthetic. Now, this is FRN scales. I'm just not a fan. Sharp as all get out on the inside. I can feel that. If I... If I go here, it scrapes the nail, right? You can see that. It just scrapes. It just scrapes the nail. It's ridiculously sharp. Uh, don't like that. I don't. I wish they would soften it, round it, because that's going to be really uncomfortable if you're doing hard tasks. So I'm not a super, super, super fan of that. All right. What is this knife? Uh, this is definitely going to be in. It's real close to the high end. I think this runs around 270, if I remember correctly. If I'm wrong. Uh, it'll be down in the comments down below. I will definitely post that, but uh, it's not a cheap knife and it's definitely more expensive. So <sighs> is it worth it? You know, a lot of people will say, you know, if you love Benchmade, you'll think it's absolutely worth it. If you're not a fan of Benchmade and you like other knives better, you may not find the value that's in this knife. And uh, you might feel it's a little overrated, you know, but there you go. Uh, Benchmade was my first really nice knife. I did like it. I appreciate it. But uh, I wish there was a little bit more with these scales. I just wish they were a little more comfortable to handle it a little bit better. I'm really disappointed that uh, both of those things got wrapped together and they looked at this more of a dollar value for who you are as far as uh, players. So there you go. Um, all right, so looking at our next thing. So purpose, I would say uh, it's definitely EDC. Hard use, yeah, it's automatic. It does lock in place. So you could get away with hard use because it does lock in place. But remember, if this disengages and you hit that lock, you could have a little blade play. But typically, it's going to want to swing back and be locked. So, you know, I'd definitely say not crazy hard um, use. You know, if you're cutting logs and banging trees and woods and chunks of wood apart, I wouldn't do that, right? I wouldn't do that. I would avoid that. But it definitely could be used pretty hard. D2 steel and, and especially powder form, it's going to be a great steel. Yeah, so definitely... Um, you get a lot, got a lot of use out of it for EDC. Uh, is is it um, is it is it like a collection piece? No, not to me. If you're a Benchmade fan, and you love Benchmade, then sure, it's a collection piece. I'm not, and so this is not a collection piece for me, not at all. So, I find it okay, um, not super amazing, not overwhelming. So you know, there's that. Uh, all right, so next thing, let's talk a little bit about ergos and feel. We talk about the handles. It is sort of rounded, rounded on the outside, except to the sharp edge, so that's nice. You do have a plenty of room for a grip, especially medium, medium, large, extra large hands, so that's nice. You uh, um, definitely, the, the button's easy to access. When you depress it, it's easy to disengage, so that's nice. Uh, blade is pretty solid. It's, yeah, you can feel the blade rock. I don't know if it needs to be tightened. This is passed around Apex. I'm not gonna do anything to it. I don't know if it needs to be tightened, but it does have blade rock, and I don't know if that's typical of automatics. A little disappointing for me, but, you know, there we go. We'll just leave it as is. But uh, that is the CPM D2. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I like it. You know, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, uh, you know, opening and closing is not bad. So... There's that. So let's talk about the fidget factor. What? How can you open this? There's, well, it's it's a button lock. The button. Button auto. So that's it. That's how you open it. Press the button, and that's how you close it. So it works. They both work really well. Fidgety goodness, about two. Get a two. It's all you get to fidget. You get to open it, you get to close it, and then you can lock it in one of those positions. That's it. Uh, now, as far as executing that fidgety goodness, I'm going to give it about a 90%. It's not as good as McNeese. It's not as good as Protec, but it's pretty solid. It's a pretty strong... Um, Pretty strong Benchmade. So I'm pretty impressed with the Benchmade strength on this uh, out the side opening. It's not bad at all. Uh, I do like the fact that it locks here so you can be locked in the closed or open position. That is definitely a benefit. Uh, but I would prefer most of the time leave it unlocked so I can access everything here. So that's nice. Um, let's talk about a little bit what else. Um, 
we talked about fidgety goodness. Talk about, it's about going to be, uh, give it a two. Out of that, we're going to execute that. We're going to give it about, I think uh, it said it was 90. Was it B, right? 90%? Uh, what else? I, I don't know. I mean, it's a steel button. That's nice. I like that lock. Um, typical there. Easy to work left-handed, right? But still strong, so you got to be careful. I do like the Tonto-shaped blade. Nice cut on the angle there. It's really nice tip there. Reminds me more of a Japanese type of Tonto kind of blade. I think that's cool. Has a nice swedge on top for basically turning into your cuts. You know, overall, it's not bad. It's interesting. So I'll, you know, I'll be pretty excited about that. Um, all right. So overall, overall, final thoughts. And is it recommended? Well. It's a not, it's not a bad Benjamin. It's a good Benjamin, okay, if, as far as Benjamin is concerned. I wish it wasn't FRN scales. I wish it wasn't so sharp on the inside. I wish it wasn't so wiggly in here and wiggly here. I wish that was a little more solid. I wish uh, the FRN, FRN scales weren't very edgy and uncomfortable. I wish this had a little better contoured shape. I wish you could choke up and things like that. Um, otherwise, you know, uh, it's okay. Uh, so again, it's not a bad knife, it's just not a great knife, and I'm not close to recommending this at all. Uh, it's not even on the border, right? But it's still still a decent knife. Uh, it's Is it overpriced? Yeah. Uh, is it something I would pay for anyways? No, no, I wouldn't, but are there people who love Benchmade who would? Absolutely. And they would love this one, I think. But I don't appreciate those skills, those, those misses there. That, it just feels cheap, right? Makes you feel like you lost your... Um, I don't know. Makes you feel like someone just got a mold, poured in the plastic, and there you go, and that's your scale because we couldn't, we ran out of those scales. I don't know. Sorry, I needed to sit there. <clears throat> but um, that is a disappointment. I wish it weren't T6s. Wish they were a little better. So those are my overall thoughts, and that's why I'm, I'm not going to recommend. It's not going to be one of my recommended knives. I think it's a, it's a decent knife. I think it probably is a little overpriced. Uh, if you're gonna buy this, definitely look for a sale on it. Um, that's my recommendation. I'm not a Benchmade, I used to be a Benchmade only super fan boy, I'm not anymore. But I don't hate Benchmade, I like Benchmade. I have a Bug Out 535-4 with aluminum scales. Really love that knife, one of my favorite. I wanna get a, an Adamus Mini Adamus. I wanna add that back to my collection. That's always one of my uh, favorite bigger, larger knives that Benchmade made. So I would like to get that back and, and just have that again in the collection. But otherwise, this eh, it doesn't really appeal to me. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. If you disagree, that's fine. If you tell me I'm wrong, please do. I mean, I'd love to hear your perspectives, your thoughts on it. I'd love to engage, engage with you in the comments. I do actually read them, and I do try to reply to every one of them. So if you found this content, this, uh, this review, fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? If you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel. It allows me to produce more content, do more things, and just grow. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to you and to all the members who are also members of the channel. Maybe you want to consider becoming a channel member. I would greatly appreciate that. So if you've done all that, maybe consider hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future content. There is a little notification screen that tells you if you want to be notified. Then make sure it's you're on there for for the future. It'd be really nice. Uh, and if you've done all that, maybe you also want to check me out over on Instagram. I do have an account over there and I do reply over there. So check me out at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. You guys have a great day and a great week. Bye.